Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your favorite host, A Millie, and I'm back with another episode of the Sip and Sip podcast. And tonight's guest, I'm just so elated. I'm so excited because she is a fresh peach. We're not serving canned peaches today. She goes by the name of Monetta Shaw Carter, and she is one of the cast members of Bravo TV's Real Housewives of Atlanta. So everyone give it up for Monetta Shaw Carter. Hey, girl. Hey, boo. How are you Thanks today? You're looking beautiful. Listen, thank you, boo. So are you. I'm loving that jacket. Thank you. Now. You know, I had to dress up. Uh, because when I think of Real Housewives of Atlanta, mm-hmm. and of course you, Mayetta, you mm-hmm. bring the the classiness, the gorgeousness, the flair, the funk. So I had to, you know, let me put on some uh, a nice blazer okay. so I can be like uh, Mayetta and be like the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Come on, girl, well, you did that. Look, I got on my jean jacket with my dress, my little multicolored dress today for you. Okay, and giving you some curls. Baby, but you, but let me tell you, you are serving up the platter, honey. Because like That's I said, it. we are serving fresh peaches today. Come on now. No we are serving it. fresh peaches, not canned peaches, not mm-hmm. Ocean Spray or Del Monte. Ah! This is fresh peaches today. Come on, <laughs> Yes, you better know. <laughs> yes. Mayena, I, again, I want to say thank you so much for coming on to the show. You are my first cast member of the Real Housewives of Atlanta to come on to this oh. podcast. Oh, yes. I am elated. Thank you for having me. And yes. Come sip and sit, honey. Yes, because we because we have to talk some tea. We're going to get into some things about season 15 of Red Housewives of Atlanta. And we're going to get to know you because I know everybody wants to know about Monetta Shaw Carter. So we're going to get into all of those things tonight. Okay. So, Monetta. Yes. This season, season 15, is your second season being on the Red Housewives of Atlanta. So tell me, how has the experience been for you thus far? And was it what you expected it to be? Oh, wow. So the season thus far, um, as it plays out, <laughs> it's honestly, it's been good. Um, I've known most of the girls Mm-hmm. prior to filming um, last season. Of course, I'm closer with Candy. Um, we've been friends for years, but Sheree, I've been friends with her for years too. Um, I met Kenya through Candy. And as you see, Kenya and I have become so close. Um, she's super cool and knew Marlo and passing, you know, mm-hmm. um, and a few more girls. So anyway, coming back, it just, it seems more, more real. And you know how they place girls sometimes mm-hmm. who really don't know each other. So it's just like, you have that genuine friendship Mm -hmm. Um, which is good, but honey, nothing can prepare you for the Housewives of Atlanta, honey. You know, I did reality TV before Mm -hmm. on Atlanta X's in. Um, It's different. It's it's definitely different, but you know, like I'm, I'm loving it. It's fun. You know, I'm learning as I go, but one thing for sure, I'm being my authentic self. That's what I was like. I show up, I'm going to do that. Mm -hmm. It is what it is. You know, Mm -hmm. you you either hate it or love it, but I got to be me, you know, for sure. Yes. And and you being your authentic self and you said a key word, you know, when you get on these reality shows, everybody wants to fake the funk. Everybody wants to be extra. But with you, it's just so natural. And I think that's why so many fans really gravitate towards you, because number one, you don't take no mess. Oh, no. And I know you are a Southern girl. So yes. I know us Southern bells, we don't take any mess. I know exactly. you. Because you're representing the great state of Louisiana. Yes, Louisiana, baby. Yes. Yes. And I was born in New Orleans, but I oh, am a native of Alabama. So, okay. you know, it's a Southern yes. Belle going on. Now, yes. did you know what you know now going into the season? How did you prepare for this season? Child, I don't know if you can prepare, but I will say this. Uh, my first season, um, just in life, how I do, I sit back and observe, mm-hmm. you know, I've said things, but we film so much and a lot of things get left off the editing table. Mm-hmm. So it seems as if I wasn't as vocal. Um, mm-hmm. And now going into this season, I'm vocal. So I just made sure that I jumped in there and, mm-hmm. you know, just voice my opinions a few times because if you say it one time, that part might not make it, you know, and whereas first season, that's what I kind of did. I said something like, okay, blah, 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 but then I sit back and observe. So this season, I'm like, okay. So I kind of get how it goes now. Um, so let me just be a little more vocal just to make sure they get some of it. You know, you got to give them 
least, you know, some, some more so they could keep or, you know, it just depends, you know, it just had to be me. And I had to just go in there and just be me a little bit louder, I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and let me just say, you have been very loud this season. <laughs> so this season started off with the bang, as you, as you know, mm -hmm. um, what were you most shocked about? filming this season what was your shocking moment for this season? honestly I would have to say my shocking moment and you're gonna see more of this play out mm -hmm. was you guys know it's a division and so mm -hmm. you want you know you're gonna have your little your moments you're gonna have your beefs but ultimately you know we're a girlfriend group you know mm -hmm. we want to reach a resolution and get together and just keep it moving you know um, I know in my girlfriend groups outside of TV, that's, you know, that's what we do. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. That's just real life. Um, but unfortunately, as you see now, it's just, it's a lot of division. So mm -hmm. I was really shocked by it. Um, but yeah, yeah. that And just seeing how, honestly, another thing, um, just how one person to be one way to you mm -hmm. and then get in the confessions and, you know, Ooh. Just go off, off. You know? Oh, yeah. Like, wow. I'm Okay. Uh, so that's what you really mean. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to sit right. back. <laughs> exactly. Like, oh, okay. I get it. I see you. Like, that's, you know, that's how you really feel. Mm -hmm. So now it's one thing for, you know, fun shade, like, mm -hmm. you know, I'll throw fun shade, but like going deep. And I'm like, ooh, okay. Yeah, that ain't it. And mm -hmm. so I, let you me <laughs> I understand that because even in my friend groups, I have been, mm -hmm. you, you've seen the division, and then mm -hmm. you get around people. And it's like, oh, so you really did mean that. So it wasn't fun shade. It wasn't all kiki and high highs. No, you meant what you said. And mm -hmm. now I got to look at you a little bit differently with a side eye. So I'm going to sit my skin and continue on doing me. That, now, part. <laughs> that part. Now, did you get any warnings, you mm -hmm. know, with you being friends with Candy mm -hmm. and Sheree? Did you get any warnings from anybody uh, to be on the lookout and keep your, your eyes open? for any any mess or any shade? Uh, yes, for sure. Um, well, my girl Candy definitely <laughs> gave me a heads up that if I had any receipts, mm -hmm. keep them. Because they're handy. Yes. And let's just say I did. Can't Ooh. talk about it. Keep watching. Y'all yeah. heard it here for We got to keep watching because it, 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 I keep a a database uh analog of receipts i'm a virgo so we are like the receipt people like any oh something that you said two years ago oh i still got it five years ago oh i still got it because you're not going to play me so mm -hmm. i see i see you my yeah to keep keep virgo. those receipts coming honey i was like okay no i'm not gonna do this but it, like candy's you know she's been around mm -hmm. you know on the show for a long time it's like say less this Oh, yes. Got it. Oh, yes, because it's going to be up in the blog. So you got to, you know, <laughs> so this, this is what was said. Exactly. This was what was said. Now, how do you handle the comments and uh, the critiques from mm -hmm. viewers from last season? You know, mm -hmm. uh, people were saying you weren't as vocal or quiet or boring from what I've seen, you know, on Twitter. How did yeah. you handle all of that with your first season and going into the second season? Well, um, just knowing who I am, I know I've mm -hmm. never been um, called boring ever. Like I'm mm -hmm. a ball of fun. Like I bring the party, I'm the energy. Yes. I turn it on and turn it off, but boring has never been one. But, you know, I get it. You know, I'm, I choose to live my life in a more classy, subtle way. Mm -hmm. So if you're trying to put me up against others, it's, it's a bit different. Mm -hmm. And but different doesn't mean boring, you know what I'm saying? Like just everybody isn't the same and there's a place for everyone. Um, and like I said, you know, I sit back and watch and observe. Mm -hmm. Um, and this season I'm just more, you know, I just got in there more and mm -hmm. I already observed what I needed to observe. Mm -hmm. I already saw who everyone pretty much is. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I had some stuff to say. And so I said it. So that's mm -hmm. just how I am in real life. So mm -hmm. I'm not going to get on TV, see a camera and go rah, rah, woo, woo, woo. And that's not who mm -hmm. I am. Mm -hmm. Now I can get to that point as you kind of saw a little bit of, you know, <laughs> um, but I'm not just going to do that for anyone mm -hmm. or anybody. I'm got to be me. Mm -hmm. So yes, girl. So, uh, <laughs> so I hope that like tells you a little bit of it, but, but can I say, I 
don't think you are quiet. I think you're just classy. But it's like, you know what? You're not going to talk to me any kind of way. I'm still going to give you. You give me face. You give me elegance and uh, eloquence and eleganza, extravaganza. And I just love like your whole demeanor. It it is like, you know what? I'm not boring. I bring the fun. And we've seen that on the show even more on the premiere episode because I think like Manietta you were getting all the tea honey that first episode you get the tea about Martell and his allegedly you know sad boo um and you know being involved with a woman around ATL and I gotta ask Mm -hmm. was that tea ever confirmed uh, not while I was there. Um, and you know, as a girlfriend, you got I want someone to come tell me if they got some tea on my man, if it's my good friend, you know, like mess is mess. But if this is something that more than one of us heard, like mm-hmm. please bring it to me, just let me know because mm-hmm. I don't want to have the blinders on and be the last one to know. So that's why I did that with her. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's be clear. <laughs> uh, but yeah, girl, like listen, this. We came in hot this season. Yes. And, you know, like I couldn't just sit back and mm-hmm. I know this information and not share it. So mm-hmm. there you have it. Do you think being at uh Sam's husband's birthday party, do you think that that area or that place was the right time to bring it to Sheree with you and Kenya? Well, I will say this. Um, Kenya, myself, and Candy, as y'all saw, we saw each other prior, but Sheree mm-hmm. and I didn't. Um, mm-hmm. And we didn't really talk as much on the phone. So, mm-hmm. and because Kenya and I and Candy discussed it, as soon as I saw her, no question, I had to, because mm-hmm. I didn't want her hearing about it from someone other than me. Mm-hmm. So, could I have done it another place? Yes, but there wasn't time. So mm-hmm. this is when I saw her immediately. I had to mm-hmm. just to let know it's coming from the horse's mouth. Yes, I heard this. I said this mm-hmm. with them. And so I'm mm-hmm. saying it to your face. Mm-hmm. And I agree. I would have said the same thing. Like, hey, mm-hmm. we're in this place. I need to get it off my chest. I need to tell you. And it's right exactly. there, right then and there. And I'm glad that you, you did answer that because a lot of people on like social media, especially mm-hmm. Twitter, they were like, oh, I wouldn't have done that in that setting. But sometimes you just got to get it off your chest. And if you want to clear something up, hey, let, let's get it out. Let's not keep waiting to say or tell anything, especially uh, for to a friend. Exactly, exactly. Especially to a friend. You know, proceed to be a friend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. What do you think, or who do you think has been the most messiest and shadiest person this season? Ooh, child. Messy, shady. I mean, just a whole overcast of shade. Shade or just... um... Oof, not it. Maybe the can, baby. I give it to the can because the <laughs> last episode she called Drew and was like, "Oh, gonna be nice," and flipped on her like, "Yeah." She but she's the crazy one, and she's the one with the problem. Like, mm-hmm. I, I, that's that was a bit much to witness that and to mm-hmm. see that firsthand. I'm like, "Ooh, that's not a good look." But I mean, hey, is that who she really is? Ooh, so we giving this overcast of shade to uh the can peach marlo. All right then. Yes. <laughs> like y'all see it. Like, I mean, I'm just saying, like, hey, beautiful, like she did me that time. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, is that it beautiful? It's just like if it, it either it's real or it's not like mm-hmm. standing who you are, own mm-hmm. that, you know, and then that's what it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I agree. I agree. I feel like the it flipped is like, you know, you can act one way, but then in a split second, the the whole mess comes off. It kind of it kind of screams a little fakeness to me. I mean, there you have it. Mm -hmm. They ain't blind. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now really feel. Tell us how you really feel. (laughs) Exactly. How you really feel. Now with uh, Marlo, we we giving her the Overcast of Shade Award for the season and the Messiest Shade. What is your take on Candy and Courtney's interaction? And was Courtney looking for a moment? Oh, absolutely. It seems like she was looking for a moment because once you dive down into what the issue really was, like, was it even an issue. Candy just said that she didn't know who she was. I didn't know who she was. A lot of people didn't know who she was. Like, it, it was a fact. 
So why are you upset at that? And then why do you have to go so hard and, mm -hmm. you know, all this articulation, you know, like, mm -hmm. I didn't understand that. So, mm -hmm. yeah, but maybe mm -hmm. it was, you know, that now that seems like you're looking for a moment. Mm -hmm. You got it. She mm -hmm. got, got the attention that, you know, was warranted. It was kind of giving me extra, extra read, read all about it. <laughs> you know, in that moment, I said, you know, it just came across like you're trying too hard, you mm -hmm. know, just be yourself, be a, your authentic self. Um, yeah. I mean, but like I said, it just gave me extra, extra read all of that. Hey, listen, <laughs> it was so, it was a lot. And we were over there with Sheree, so we had no idea. I'm mm -hmm. trying to tell my husband, can you go get candy so we mm -hmm. can get the bottom of this? Because, you know, mm -hmm. we heard information, da, 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 first hand, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And he was like, uh, no, uh, she's unavailable. She's, it's a situation. I was like, what situation? So all of us are shocked. And then we get over there and she's telling us what happened. Mm -hmm. Like, so confused. Like, mm -hmm. what is all of this energy like, mm -hmm. coming from? Because she doesn't know you. She don't. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. And especially at a party, like yeah. that energy, like that, especially at a party, it, it was just too much. It was, it was it a was lot. It was very too much. It was a and, lot. And I, I love your dynamics of um, your friendship with Candy. You have a very strong bond, you and Kenya, and even you and Drew this season. Yeah. But recently, uh, former housewife Cynthia, Cynthia Bailey. She did a podcast episode on two teas in a pod. That is with Telly Medicap. Uh, she was on Red Housewives of Beverly Hills and Summer Judge, who was on Red Housewives of the OC. Mm -hmm. And she talked about how, you know, this season of Red Housewives of Atlanta, um, she said it's missing genuine friendships with mm -hmm. the cast. What's mm -hmm. your opinion of her comment? Um, I can see where she's coming from. Um, it feels, and you're going to see this play out, a little forced, mm -hmm. you know, with some people. Because, mm -hmm. you know, me, Kenya Candy, we hang out off, you know, off camera. Like, we're mm -hmm. really friends and we really have that bond. Mm -hmm. um, and granted, they can't show everything, you know. So mm -hmm. from what they're showing, I feel like you still feel that. But I feel like she's coming from a place where, because she's she filmed with us a few times. Mm -hmm. And she sees the forceness of it. Like, is mm -hmm. it real? Is it a real friendship? Or are y'all mm -hmm. just trying to make, you know, mm -hmm. fetch happen? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but I, I feel like this season, I, I love the dynamics of you, Candy, and Kenya, and Drew. It's like a force to be reckoned with. I mean, you, die, you guys don't take any miss. I mean, it's like you really have each other's back. And, you know, speaking of friendships, again, with this season, um, you being close with Candy and Kenya, but it seems like Marlo has been discrediting your friendship with both of them. And she often says, you are looking for the moment. What do you feel or what do you think about her saying that? I just feel like she just says anything which she has even said out of her mouth before. She does. Um, I never look for a moment. I don't have to look for a moment. I meet with or without a show. Mm -hmm. Grateful to be on it and have this platform, but let's be very clear. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like I'm known in Atlanta, been known in Atlanta mm -hmm. for a very, very long time. So it makes sense. And just you could tell if I was looking for a moment, Mm -hmm. Last season, when I was born, I would have did that then, you know. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. So it's not enough. It's mm -hmm. not enough at all. Can I just say, you are the moment. So it's like you don't have to look for a moment. Of course not. Like, <laughs> so I'm like it goes without saying. Like, I'm mm -hmm. me. I shine regardless, um, yes. whether I sit back or whether I speak. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. some people have that, that, that you know, factor mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. it. And, I do. And like, I don't, you know, like I shine regardless and mm -hmm. I don't take, and that doesn't take away from anyone else's light. You know, mm -hmm. um, there's enough light for us all. It's just, if mm -hmm. the secure people, they have problems with it. Mm -hmm. they try to make moments out of it. But yeah, like you said, I am the moment. I don't have to try to reach to get a moment. I do me. So, and that's enough. <laughs> that part, that part. I and I, I do want to ask, like, what do you think is the real issue that Marlo has for you? It's like she's been coming for you ever since uh, last season and this season. What is the real issue that Marlo has with you? 
I don't know. I think it could be a bit of intimidation. You know, mm -hmm. um, I am a real housewife um, and I have things going on. Um, I have, I mean, I'm just saying like, what is it? Because I've been nothing but kind to her mm -hmm. up until, you know, I saw the few times she was coming at me on the slick. So, yeah, so maybe that's it. A lot of people have said that. But I mean, mm -hmm. it's unfortunate because like I said, it's enough out here for everybody. Why you got to hate on the next person? Mm -hmm. But you know, mm -hmm. I mean, maybe so. If I was her, maybe I would be a little, you know, scared too. I don't know. Ooh. <laughs> and that's it right there. There it is. <laughs> I'm just uh, and it's like you, I love, I'm not going to, I have to give you your props because mm -hmm. you kind of snatched everybody's edges that day on Twitter when you called Marlo a canned peach and Nene's do boy. And I can, can I just say Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all social media was a buzz. Even the blogs, that was an iconic read, honey. That they was did. an overcast of <laughs> shade for the whole season. And I think everybody that will go on in history and real house housewives history that she is a canned peach. I mean, did you, did you think that what you said was going to go viral? Did you really think? No, I did not because, you know, <laughs> in my public life, um, I normally don't because I choose the classy route, mm -hmm. keep it classy. Mm -hmm. That's what my books, planners, everything is about because that's how I live my life. And we all know that's not mm -hmm. popular for the blogs. So, mm -hmm. no, not in a million years that I think that. I was just defending myself and speaking up for myself mm -hmm. once I saw what I saw. Mm -hmm. And so I had to tell it like it was. Straight and you up. did. And you did because, like I said, I don't eat canned peaches. I eat the real peaches. I go like back. Real but that, right? that snatched my whole edges. And I barely got any right now. But <laughs> it snatched my whole got. edges. But all the comments were in your favor. Whether it was the neighborhood talk, the shade room, everybody, what you said, Magneta, it is plain fact. Everybody was in your favor for what you oh, said. And I appreciate the love because I know how it how it wavers, honey. <laughs> though. Love you did not. But so I appreciate that and that they saw it for mm -hmm. what it was. Um, I'm not gonna sit and I get it. She probably thought I was gonna sit back because I'm so classy and this and that, mm -hmm. but like don't don't push me. Like I you know, you exactly. know, like I'm real mm -hmm. talk over here. So I just because it's it. like if you keep poking the bear. Eventually, exactly. eventually, it's going to erupt. It's really 100%. going to speak. One hundred percent. So I'm like, girl, okay, all right, that's cute. But listen, <laughs> you, man, how long did it take you? Like, girl, come on, humble yourself, mm -hmm. please. Yes, and and even like with this season, I feel like Marlo has mm -hmm. really, she's been showing herself, and in a not a good light. And what are your thoughts? about what went down in Birmingham because it seemed mm -hmm. like she was very disrespectful when she went knocking and banging on Kenya's door. And why do you think all the other ladies condone what Marlo did? I looked at you and you did not condone what you did. You said what you said and you took up for your friend, you know, as a grown woman, I'm gonna hold you accountable. You wrong for that. But I felt like mm -hmm. none of the other women did that with Marlo. What do you think about that? Yeah, like it's in I said and I I said something in scene that didn't make it. I was like, first of all, as we Marlo and I was going back and forth, it's mm -hmm. not a proud moment for me. But listen, you just tried to take me out with this steel door. Like I, I blacked out. All bets are off. Like, girl, mm -hmm. what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Like you're putting my life in danger. Like mm -hmm. you're trying it. Like you're you're mm -hmm. taking it too far. Um, but yeah. And with the knocking on the door, like, I was like, okay, Brooklyn might be in there or she's with the nanny. Either way, this ain't it. So if you see me, I'm mm -hmm. sitting back like this, my mouth moving, but it didn't make it mm -hmm. what I was saying. But I'm like, girl, like, come on. And everybody else, like, I don't know. It's just like they condone this behavior. So at some point I was like, listen, now I'm looking at y'all crazy because y'all, mm -hmm. you know, and so mm -hmm. y'all basically are encouraging this behavior. This ain't it. Like, mm -hmm. who wants to be around somebody that acts like this and behaves like this? Um, mm -hmm. And, like, we had our kumbaya, and she said mm -hmm. that she has a life coach and going to change. And, mm -hmm. I, and as I'm so glad they showed, I was like, listen, girl, okay, calm down on the hug. What I eventually did, mm -hmm. and it was after yep. a prayer. I led a prayer. Mm -hmm. She, her mm -hmm. prayer um, made it. Um, and because it was a moment for me because I'm grieving. And, you know, I'm like, listen. If you, your actions show that you're changing and you want to change, I'm cool and mm -hmm. I'll give you that same mm -hmm. energy. 
but you know, mm -hmm. you gotta show better, you know, mm -hmm. to receive better. And mm -hmm. I left it at that. And then the next time I saw she was on the same thing with Candy. So I was like, ooh, you know, like mm -hmm. two reminiscent yeah. of yeah. my hand. So mm -hmm. of course mm -hmm. I'm just like, oh, okay. I see, I see who you are. Mm -hmm. So do you think her apology was fake in Birmingham? Girl, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> Clearly it was. Mm -hmm. Clearly it was. And mm -hmm. that's not because you got me one time, but you're not gonna get me again, you know. Like, mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I agree. I I feel like that whole episode, like at Birmingham, it was too much. You were there to like enjoy Magic City Classic yeah. and by far the best game. I'm a graduate of Alabama State University. Okay. So I wanted to see all of you. At oh, Mad City Classic, yes. It, it, but you, you know what? There's always this year, and I hope you all will come back and perform. Oh, um, oh. because the way you were teaching Kenya the dance moves, oh, I said, oh, oh, this oh, money at all. <laughs> oh, honey, you was working it, honey. This said, come on now, good old eight count, getting with the girls. I was like, oh, I haven't danced in years. I was like, this is okay, this is giving. Let me, you know, got me back into my one of my loves, honey. Um, and then getting with the dancers and just the band, it was just such a good moment. So I mm -hmm. really, really hate that um, you guys couldn't couldn't see it or we couldn't even make it to that point. Mm -hmm. It was very disappointing. But yeah. I hope that you will make it this year. And we, hey, I know the Sting guests can use a little eight count. You know, <laughs> we need they need to bring all of you all back th for uh, this game this year in October. I would yeah. love to see you all out on the field and you basking in the ambiance of just one of the biggest HBCU classics. Um, so I mean, because you're an HBCU girl, right? Well, I went to Grambling. What up, GSU? Uh, my freshman year, but I have two degrees uh -huh. from Southern, um, Southern Shreveport. But I graduated okay. from Louisiana Tech, so the HBCU love is in me. It, it's still in so it. Hey, you, you're still a part of the swag. You know, we play Grambling as well, so you're still ah, a yes, part of the swag. Yes, of course. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. Yeah. Yes, always it's good. Nothing like, it. Yeah. nothing like it. Nothing mm -hmm. like it. So I know this past Sunday, um, well, the Sunday before last, there was a, an event that you all went to. Um, it was actually Courtney's event. And I gotta ask you, Mangetta, you and Candy are so tight, and I love mm -hmm. the way that you know you kind of go check on your friend when she getting to that point. What was yeah. going through your mind when you saw Candy Drew? And Marlo and, you know, talking and it started to escalate. And then that's when you got up and went over there. What was going through your mind at that time? Listen, Birmingham, because I know I blacked out. Uh, <laughs> and like, I'm like, okay, girl, it ain't worth it. Like at all. So I had to check on Candy and like, okay, don't do it. Like I could tell when she's getting to that point. And I'm like, okay. But then she's like, okay, y'all get off me, get off me. Okay, but still. We're not gonna let you do nothing that you're gonna regret later. Exactly. So that ain't gonna happen. Okay, how mad you get? <laughs> no man. And, and that's a happen. real friend like that. That yeah. is a real yeah, right. friend right there. I don't care. So you get you'll, mad you'll with think me, us you later. Yes. It, you, you'll think you'll, you'll think, think me later. later. But exactly. uh, you can hoop holler and curse me out all you want to and say, get off of me, but I'm not getting up off of you. But I, okay. I just love how like you went over there and you did kind of like, come on, friend. Oh, you know, you don't let's mm -hmm. not, let's mm -hmm. not. And some people, yeah, some women right. and older women in our age range, we sometimes we leave our friends alone. And I feel like you're not being a friend. And exactly. I love and I love how like you went over there. I'm going to check on my friend. Mm -hmm. That Probably. I love yeah. that. Thank you. Regardless of I, that. In a day, mm -hmm. she has empires. <laughs> like mm -hmm. you can't mess up the church's money, honey. Mm -hmm. Oh, but yes. Like, come on. Mm -hmm. But it's not mm -hmm. worth it. So mm -hmm. not at all. And, and it's not. And you know what? And I miss seeing you on last week's episode at the Gucci oh. event. Yeah, I was like, now I know Manetta needs to be there. What did what did you think about hearing about? It? I know Candy told you what went down, but even rewatching it. What was your take on the whole charade Gucci event? Listen, first of all, um, <laughs> I'm like, what in the world? 
what's going on? And everyone was like, where were you? Where were you, child? I, was like, I don't even know where I was, but uh, I didn't get that invite for whatever reason. But uh -huh. I'm glad that I didn't because it was nothing but mess, like a whole bunch mm -hmm. of mess. And already, mm -hmm. you know, after the Birmingham, after the beat the blow, I was like, no, like my spirit, my mm -hmm. energy didn't mm -hmm. need all of it. So I'm mm -hmm. like, like I was taking it as a okay, was that a like a like you trying to come at me? Like I'm the only one that didn't get an invite, but new girl got an invite. So I'm just like, mm -hmm. oh, okay, but thank God, like it was nothing yeah. but in drama. Like mm -hmm. really, mm -hmm. like um Ken was going over the thing about the flowers again, and Candy had to say, mm -hmm. "Fuck your flowers!" Like you're not gonna get like because it was like you're you're reaching, you're really reaching. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and who else had me? The, the Drew and, and another Marlo. Like, like, yeah, what's going on? So it's like, please take some inner self looking, like, mm -hmm. do that, please. And then mm -hmm. figure your stuff out mm -hmm. 100%. And but it didn't look very brunchy to me. It did not. It did mm -hmm. not. It, it felt like you could, you can walk in there, you can cut the tension with a knife. Of course. It, it just felt like, oh, wow. But at least we did have a leeway with the whole uh, Courtney and Candy. They kind of resolved their issues, even oh, with yeah. Kina and, Kina and Sam Sanya a little bit. But, you know, of course, we, we didn't see any resolve from Marlo and Candy. I don't know uh, if we'll ever see a resolve from Marlo and Candy. Yeah, I mean, I think that ship has sailed because, mm -hmm. you know, over the years, like it goes deeper than that. It's over the years. Mm -hmm. And then things, you say things that you can't take back. And that's what mm -hmm. I need people to realize, you know, um, you know, yeah. words matter. Like they really mm -hmm. do too. And mm -hmm. especially your intent with that word. Mm -hmm. So you have to think about what you say before you say them. Um, mm -hmm. And really, you know, like they're, words are powerful. Mm -hmm. 100%. They are. Like, yeah, you can't just say it and then be like, oh, girl, that's nothing. I'll just plan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, no. So, yeah, I mean, I hope for the group's sake that, you know, we can all just come to some kind of mm -hmm. understanding. But it's just a lot going on, even more so now. Like, people doing interviews, acting like they don't know people. Me, I'm like, Ooh. what? You just, mm -hmm. just a lot going on, child. I'm like, what is this? <laughs> like, so, <laughs> yeah, all right, girl. That's yes. And good. as and as season 15, you know, progresses, what can we expect for the rest of the season? Because I know you got some tea. I, we done seen the trailers. We, yeah. we done seen a lot. What can we expect for the rest of the season? Um, You can expect us trying to get on the same page and, mm -hmm. you know, and if that'll happen or not. So definitely stay tuned. Um, mm -hmm. You can see some revealing of, of truths. Ooh. Um, Ooh coming out so yeah it's it's good it's it's good and um unexpected i would say mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. i cannot i cannot wait as the season progresses you know the cash trip i am dying to see that in the fashions yeah. but of yeah. course to really sip this tea about some truths that are coming out i cannot wait mm -hmm. for that so yeah. uh, we, we can continue to look forward to that. Now, you know, I want to switch gears a little bit. We talked about Real Housewives of Atlanta, but I want to get to know Mrs. Mongetta Shaw Carter a little yeah. bit. Okay. So I want to... I want to ask, you know, you recently got married. Congratulations. Thank and you. I, I love the dynamic when I see you and your husband on the show mm -hmm. and in your pictures on Instagram. Oh, I'm like, mm -hmm. wow, man, one day that's going to be me one day. Yes, uh, it is. What, what's the secret to a happy and healthy marriage? Mm -hmm. That's big. Honestly, just make sure you're ready. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Making yeah. sure you work on yourself, mm -hmm. um, because I know if he would have came, you know, back in you know a few days, we've been mm -hmm. together, we've been married almost two years, but together for like five. Mm -hmm. um, so anytime before that, it wouldn't have been, it wouldn't have worked, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, so making sure that the timing is right and being open, being mm -hmm. open, being honest, and honestly finding your your person, your friend, just like we're mm -hmm. literally like best friends and that helps 
so much and just find someone that supports you. The support that my husband gives me is amazing. And I really, really mm -hmm. appreciate it. And just the way he sees me, it's just like, wow, mm -hmm. you know, it's glad it. everything happened like it did to get to this mm -hmm. point. Mm -hmm. um, and the way, mm -hmm. the way he loves my kids and, you know, yes. his kids, like, and just how we bring it all together. Um, it's a beautiful thing. It really is. And I'm so grateful to have it. And I love, I love to really hear that and see that. And um, you kind of touched on something. Um, how did you truly heal from your past relationships mm -hmm. to get to where, where you are now in your marriage? Mm -hmm. Honestly, um, my faith, my faith in God mm -hmm. is a big part of that. Um, my dad, he's like my, my rock and my mom who recently passed, um, mm -hmm. just the foundation that, I was so blessed to receive from them, mm -hmm. you know, from my roots growing up. Um, I always fall back on that whenever I'm going through mm -hmm. any adverse situation. And mm -hmm. um, honestly, that <laughs> that helped a lot. Many nights praying and uh, mm -hmm. speaking life, you know, from my father mm -hmm. into me and mm -hmm. then me into myself and meditating and just, you know, doing a lot of self work. Like I had a mm -hmm. lot of unpacking to, to see why that mm -hmm. happened, you know. Um, to see my part in it. And um, honestly, journaling, journaling helped and mm -hmm. journaling birthed my two books, um, mm -hmm. The Bigger Than Me, mm -hmm. um, which mm -hmm. is basically, you know, self-help going through everything mm -hmm. and why I choose to move how I move and put the kids first, mm -hmm. regardless of me hurting at that time. Mm -hmm. And then the mm -hmm. birth of Keith Classy, um, mm -hmm. the other book, um, it mm -hmm. just, journaling helped, honestly, I feel like that was therapy, you know, and I, you yes. know, on the later part, started therapy. Like I know mm -hmm. in our community, it's kind of frowned mm -hmm. upon. Now more people are getting into it, which is a blessing um, mm -hmm. because it's good to really have that outlet, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so honestly, all of those things help mm -hmm. me so I can get to this point. I love that. And um, you said prayer. That mm -hmm. was the, the first thing I heard you say. And then, you know, self-caring with journaling. I recently released my journal and it's called um, Healing is a Journey, Give Yourself Grace. And yeah. I remember seeing on your story one day, I think um, you had your tea, you had your journal, your Bible. And that was like, it kind of was like an aha moment. It's like, mm -hmm. wow, my get a journals. Mm -hmm. And it was just so, you said it, it was so, it's so therapeutic to really just write down all of your emotions, all of your prayers. I kind of call it like, let it flow. Yes. Um, and yes. it helped me to really get through uh, some very tough times, even recently with mental health. You you know, we talk about uh, mental health and it's not, we don't talk about it in our community enough. Even in our organizations, it's always yes. a boo. And I, I thank you for just sharing that and knowing that it is okay to, you know, journal and pray mm -hmm. and go to, and seek therapy because we all need help. And um, I just want to just say thank you for just being open and transparent on how that helped you to heal, yes. to get to um, a point in your life in a happy and a healthy marriage. Absolutely. Well, thank you for that. Because yeah, it's so very important for me. Mm -hmm. I would not have made it <laughs> without mm -hmm. all of those things. For mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cannot do it by myself, baby. You cannot. You cannot. I want to ask, what would you say to someone like me who yeah. might give up on, you know, love? Um, what would advice would you give? Because we we look at you. You are in a successful and a happy, loving marriage. And what would you say or give advice to people like me who have given up on love or think, oh, when is it going to happen? What would you say to um, any of us? Um, wow. Honestly, just just keep going. Mm -hmm. um, keep doing the work that you're doing mm -hmm. on you. Stay busy. Um, because mm -hmm. it was a time I was like, oh, that's all that's out here. Oh, my gosh. What's going on? Nobody like that. Nah, nah, nah. But it wasn't time yet. So I'm telling mm -hmm. you that timing mm -hmm. and it's going to be mm -hmm. when you least expect it. Just stay open mm -hmm. big, um, because I know a lot of my girlfriends who are now single. They're like, oh, I wouldn't date a guy like this. I wouldn't do that. I don't want to mm -hmm. 
mixed races. Da, da, da. I'm like, girl, mm -hmm. okay, you're missing your blessing. God could be sending you this man, but you're all in your head and you have this mm -hmm. list. Like, let go, you know, trust yourself, listen to that inner voice. And just, you know, be open and, and, you know, continue to love on yourself. Like I said, mm -hmm. stay busy, do your thing. Don't focus on when is he coming? When is the relationship coming? Because mm -hmm. that's going to mm -hmm. be the time that your beautiful blessing comes, honestly. Because mm -hmm. um, that's exactly how it happened for me. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Now, Mayetta, I'm going to say you, I'm going to give you another hat because okay. you kind of play, you kind of play matchmaker. I mean, we've seen you play matchmaker with Kenya, and I know you play matchmaker with your friends. So, you know, like uh, if you ever have, you have a nephew or you have okay. someone that you think will be great for a, a true Southern Belle like myself. Uh, yes, you know, we. I want to, you know, work your magic, some matchmaker. Okay, I got you. My daughter, the it's matchmaker. So funny. It's so funny because I don't like to match people. I just get them in the same room together. And then I'll let you know what I'm saying. Because like, if it don't work, I'm like, don't y'all look at me. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I know a lot of people. And I know a lot of like really good people too. And I'm like, huh, oh, that could be. All right, let's see. You know. Um, so I got you, girl. I'm, I'm oh, keep my yes. My, Ooh, I yeah. Yes, we we gonna call you Manetta the matchmaker. Come on now, with the now. fresh, oh, the fresh now. feet now. Come on. <laughs> so Manetta, yes, you wear so many hats, and I'm just gonna name all the hats that you wear. Um, of course, you know matchmaker, but you're a wife, a mom, an entrepreneur, an author, a choreographer, an actress, and a model. How do you balance it? it all it this is like nine hats that you wear eight or nine hats and it's like you are a nine piece honey you know what they mean you know a triple thread you are nine thread because you out here doing it all how do you juggle all of that listen i have to be the that's why the planner came came in honey because yes. i'm old school with the journals and everything I have to write my day down. Very old. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have it on my calendar on the phone. But honestly, I have to be very, <laughs> very, very direct about how my day is going because mm -hmm. of so many things that I'm involved in. Um, of course, the kiddos and all their extracurricular activities. Um, mm -hmm. They're auditioning now. Like, like they're getting these awesome callbacks and like everything. The acting class is like just so much. Um, mm -hmm. I just have to take a breather. <laughs> do my meditation and everything and grounding in the morning, you know, mm -hmm. and get my head clear um, mm -hmm. to be this day. And they got to have the help of my supportive um, husband. Because yeah. when I tell you, because I used to have to do this all by myself. <laughs> so I'm like, goodness. So it feels good. To you have to have up. a lot of strength to do that a by lot. yourself. A lot. And now you <laughs> have. Yes. Oh, now you have a supporter yeah, plus that you still had, and you still have. We're gonna thank you, Lord Jesus, you know, we, and your supportive village. Because I was like, oh, oh my gosh, God. she does all of this. Yeah. How, how, does, how do you juggle it all? But the planner, you said, yes, this and we're gonna talk. Yes, Woo. I'm, I'm excited. We're gonna I'm talking a little bit about that because, um. I, I went online and I saw your journal and I saw you, you posted about it. Um, but I want to know what's a typical day for you, Manietta? What is a typical day, like your morning routine? Um, what do you like to do? What What do you like to do that most people don't know about? Hmm, that they don't know. So I posted, um, but I, I really didn't post that much about it, but just outside grounding even though i've been grounding all mm -hmm. my life i really didn't know because i'm from the country and we would walk mm -hmm. out back on the grass but literally it hurts. so much and still do it <laughs> listen and not know, like you connecting with the earth like it heals mm -hmm. ailments like it like brings high blood pressure down takes away anxiety mm -hmm. stress like it does so much so mm -hmm. that's a given and a lot of people don't know that. Um, I just started like posting here and there about it. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, have my devotional book, read the scripture, like just have to get grounded and just clear 
my mind because mm -hmm. so much goes on in the world so much mm -hmm. and we're faced up against so many things so mm -hmm. that's a go um started mm -hmm. back working out so mm -hmm. that's good and that's big and that's a good way to clear your mind as well um mm -hmm. i was in this bike riding club so i'm not in the city anymore so i'm not in the club but mm -hmm. started to ride my bike honey so okay yeah, three times a week um so yeah, that also like that helps me just mm -hmm. decompress, you know. I'm um, gonna take mm -hmm. my meetings for my company, the Evan Grace Group. We do so mm -hmm. many things, and um, I have my children's books, like everything. Um, mm -hmm. Press and sitting here talking with you, just have to plan mm -hmm. the day out. But that's a mm -hmm. you know a day to life. The kids stuff, like it's a summer now, so they're between mm -hmm. here and their dad. Um, mm -hmm. And they're here now. I'm surprised they're you don't hear them. <laughs> <laughs> they might be outside swimming um, mm -hmm. with my husband watching um but yeah so girl it's in every day is different so mm -hmm. you know it just depends on the day but honey we busy mm -hmm. over here we uh yeah. booked and busy <laughs> Book, booked and busy over yeah. there and mm -hmm. you know uh you talked to about your planner, you know, you are such a, a successful entrepreneur and you released the co-parenting planner. What was your inspiration to really, you know what, I'm about to publish, publish this planner. I'm going to put it out there. What was your inspiration about uh, from that? Yes. The inspiration for creating this planner is because so many people, like even if they're new to co-parenting or have been co-parenting for a long mm -hmm. time, like mm -hmm. structure is so important, you know, um, mm -hmm. a lot of times you can get off track and it's mm -hmm. so frustrating. So I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, let me just take it old school and create this planner. You can see it in writing. You can gift the other one that just mm -hmm. to make sure you have your budget, you have, okay, well, Jimmy's supposed to be here at this time on this day. Just have it there. So it's no excuses. Um, and you know, like, and honestly, it's, perfect if you have to go to mediation or court and mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. did you have them on all your days mm -hmm. like it's right here um your honor like it just helps with the structure it helps mm -hmm. to just organize things it really mm -hmm. does it's been mm -hmm. like heaven sent for me and my mm -hmm. family my friends who already have it mm -hmm. and you have a reflection like that's big on like journaling and everything mm -hmm each month like things you could have done different um you know things you want to do or your goals for the next month or even like we mm -hmm. have to break down weekly um so it's very impactful and it helped me so much so i had mm -hmm. to share it so i would always mm -hmm. buy these planners every single year and i'm like oh my mm -hmm. gosh open okay and then i would literally have one for like the co-parents and for the kids mm -hmm. and business and have one for me personal time. I was like, okay, let me just do one so it could be like all in one, you know? And so that's when I birthed my baby, the co-parenting planner. So I'm super excited about it. And yes. I, and I love, love it. it. I have, you know what? I, I'm not a parent yet, but mm -hmm. I want to buy it and support you because I, so I'm I'm a child of, of divorced parents. And I feel oh. like maybe, you know, if my mom had something like that years ago, mm -hmm. Uh, things probably would have been, you know, yeah. a little bit better turn out yeah. different. And now you have this planner like for parents now and that can go on, you know, to the future to help everybody be organized, everybody on the same page. And then yeah. then just have like a reflective, you know, moment of what I can do Huge. better. What You know, yeah. I, I love that. And I think this is so this is very wanted in our community and mm -hmm. all, all communities, but really our community. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. I really, I really feel that. Um, and you know, it's it's different. You know how people kind of you know shy away from things mm -hmm. that are different, but I feel like it's definitely worth a try, and mm -hmm. it's life changing if you really mm -hmm. stick to it. You really go, and it will help so much. It'll yes, because so I know sometimes I forget. I'm like, okay, what day did we? You know, mm -hmm. just back thumb back through it, and it's right there. Mm -hmm. You know, just take the time to write it down. You yes. Know, life changing. Yeah. I, lo sure. I love that. I love that. What <laughs> is your inspiration um, to being an author? And you have written uh, some children's books. What was your inspiration behind those books? Oh my gosh. Just honestly, creating a legacy um, mm. from, from yeah. mom to them, honestly. Um, yeah. And back when I wrote my first one, and I want to say, 
2013, you mm -hmm. didn't see a lot of books that represented us, you know, mm -hmm. um, of color. So it's mm -hmm. very important. Rep representation matters. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted them to be able to see someone that looked like them on a book and be able to read mm -hmm. adventures about them. So I created um, The Adventures of Maddie, just based on my daughter. Mm -hmm. Um, and now I have the coloring book as well for that. And I created mm -hmm. the Chronicles of Night Sky Meso, which is mm -hmm. based after my son. And um, he actually did a, a cool thing, like a soundtrack to the book. And it's about anti-bullying, oh, wow. basically treating others as you want to be treated, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and no matter, you know, race, religion, like sex, like mm -hmm. just treating others how you want, just be nice, be kind. Mm -hmm. um, and so he song, he did mm -hmm. a song. Um, called Nice Guy, Good Guy that's out and has so many streams on the video with his dad in the video. And they just recently did the remix with his dad is on the song. It's really mm -hmm. cool. He was on the song. The Dougie Fresh is on the song. And oh, wow. Artist Donnie, um, Donnie Arcade. And so we're shooting the video soon. So it's just, girl, we're busy over here, girl. And he has an active video to that. And we're working on the next books. So Oh, wow. Wow. It on his daughter and everything. It's, it's awesome. Yeah. Booked and busy for the <laughs> Star Carter household this yes. whole year. It has been, you know, booked and busy. But, you know, um, I love to talk to Black authors. Mm -hmm. And when I was looking at your children's book, and now you have the coloring book, and it's just so much. I wish, you know, I'm 35 going on 36. We mm -hmm. didn't have a lot of representation back then mm -hmm. growing up in the 90s and me in the mm -hmm. 2000s. There were not a lot of Black author representation. Mm -hmm. And you represent, you know, all of us, the black authors, and I cannot wait to see the video and hear oh, the remix to the song. And congratulations mm -hmm. to your son, he's doing amazing things. This is Thank huge. You. Oh, how, do, how do you feel like seeing your children now? Like, okay, mm -hmm. my children are really doing it, they, they are booked and busy. Yes, it's so <laughs> like, I just smile so big when I see it, just watch mm -hmm. their talent and mm -hmm. I'm like wow they really got it because I never wanted to be that that stage mom that's like you mm -hmm. do it I'm like oh no they have to mm -hmm. ask they have to and they were on me for years about mm -hmm. it and I'll tell you like with their auditions and everything um learn the lines in like 30 minutes I'm like wait what like seven mm -hmm. pages I'm like oh and then just oh wow so, cool. and so it's it's amazing. It's so amazing. My son uh, Mason was up for the role Young Simba on Broadway. He didn't get it because of his height. You know, oh, it's just wow. like, you know, yeah, he was too tall. But it's just like it's a blessing, and I cannot wait to see what all of them, um, you know, what God has in store for all of them. Yes. But I'm gonna continue to foster it, and it's, you know, as long as they say they want to do it, I'm like, I'm gonna be right there. We're gonna mm -hmm. be right there. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah, I love yeah. it. And he and he will be on Broadway. We're we're putting that right now right. out of the atmosphere. It's up in the stuff. Yes, he offered his TV role right now. So let's put that one in the uh, in the atmosphere. So we're gonna put we're gonna put this up in the atmosphere that yeah, makes it. It so will be on a TV show near you. And because God has them, you yes. have been very faithful, a great parent and nurturing on, and, and, and really teaching them about, you know, what it means to have faith and have that small grain of a mustard seed. Mustard you can move mountains. And it, I can't wait to see him on there. We it's already up in the stuff. God got him. On he, he, he's on there. He is yes. on there. And you know, with all of your children's successes. You recently, and this is huge, Mayetta, you were recently awarded the Presidential Lifetime Achievement Award. Oh, yeah, congratulations. Thank you. And, so with, and with all of your success, what was that moment like when you received that notification or that phone call saying that you have received this award? And what does this mean for you as, oh, as wow. a woman and as a mother? It means everything. It really does. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, I was like, okay, is this a joke? What's going on? Are they going to be there? What's good? Okay, but okay, mm -hmm. this is it. Okay, cool. When is it? So yeah, I was trying to get everything off. Like, girl, stop playing. Um, but no, honestly, it was such an honor to even to be recognized amongst everyone that's been recognized, um, to be seen, you know, mm -hmm. for, for good things. Because like I mentioned earlier, a lot of that, you know, 
the good deeds you do sometimes go unnoticed, which is fine. Yeah. That's why mm-hmm. I do it. Um, you know, I've been doing this for years, like my charitable work. And, you know, I don't, I didn't talk about it a lot, but now I'm mm-hmm. like, because I, I realized the more you talk, that'll also make other people want to do the same. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm more vocal about those things. And I'm starting a charity. I have started a charity on my own um, um, in my mother's name, Linda B's Grace Foundation. So I'm going to mm-hmm. continue to do amazing work. Um, and I know she, she'll be so proud of it. But yeah. I was just it just felt good to, to see that my work um hasn't been in vain and um it it has been recognized and it was it was such a humbling and amazing feeling um mm-hmm. uh, to, to be even considered um and now you know in a few months have this dinner and have this uh, award ceremony um for the the great works you know and selfless mm-hmm. work that mm-hmm. i've been doing over the many years it, it's a great mm-hmm. feeling and to see you know for my kids to see that Mm-hmm. And you know, and and for them to be proud, like it's it's all worth it. And, and yes. Oh my gosh, I you know when I saw that when you posted about it and um just reading it um mm-hmm. in the news and online, I said, wow, is is nothing but black excellence. excellence yeah. And, and and we gotta continue to um you know give people like you your flowers or what you do in the community and how we can shape the future of the mm-hmm. children to continue in your in our footsteps and i know your mom is proud of you she is like skinning and grinning telling god and jesus that's my baby down there and she's you know <laughs> uh continuing to be with you and i thought that that was what's such an honor to start a charity mm-hmm. in your mom's name thank you thank you yeah. so much i really yeah. did yeah it means a lot it really does yeah and you know what of course you know me here at the sip and sit we're gonna continue to support you whatever you need monietta just please reach out to us and let me know because we there i'm I'm just a happen to skip away from atlanta okay, so, uh, yes yes right. call you girl like, yeah, please up. please do because i mean you got you you have a job first too you know a little matchmaker job so. <laughs> I got oh, you. There we go, right there. Mm-hmm. So I know you said that you are coming out with another planner. So anything that we can expect with you um, or from you this year in business, any more children's books that you got coming out or anything yeah. that Monietta Shaw Carter, what, what, is, what does she have coming out for the rest of the year? Oh, wow. So much. Um, I have like I said, we're working on the next installment of the children's books, Adventures mm-hmm. of Maddie and the Chronicles of Nice Guy Meso, Um, because it kind of left off with the you know cliffhanger. Mm-hmm. So everybody's like wondering, okay, what happened? What did it do? So that's coming. Super excited about that. Of course, the video uh, we're shooting that soon when their dad gets off tour thing. But um, mm-hmm. and it's awesome because it's um hip hop's 50th anniversary. Like how yes. huge is that? You know, to have. Yes. It well um and i have my keep it classy um weekend that's coming up um it was last july Mm -hmm. but um i pushed it back we're working on some things with um some sponsorships honey so um and i want to make sure everything is in place and perfectly so we have that going on we have Mm -hmm. the mom night night out tour that's going to kick back off soon where we you know Mm -hmm. just we do so much as moms and we just need to let our hair down sometimes Mm -hmm. and just Oh, give each other our flowers. So mm-hmm. um, we did DC, Charlotte. Where else did we do? Of course, Atlanta. Um, mm-hmm. A couple more places. We're gonna go to my hometown, Shreveport. Um, awesome. We're gonna do Houston. Da- and we did Dallas. So we're gonna do Dallas. But yeah, so so many things. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and working on a, another planner, not just for co-parenters, but mm-hmm. for everyone. Yes. <laughs> So yes, girl, and still I'm, you know, getting back in my acting bag. Um, have a couple of films that are coming out, some stuff I'm okay. working on my agency. I'm booking artists overseas, so we have some huge names. I don't really, it's white collar, so mm-hmm. I don't really discuss it. But yeah, mm-hmm. she, 
She busy. You got some good, some good she stuff. She busy. On. So yeah. <laughs> she booked and busy. Okay. You know, of course, fresh peaches, not canned peaches, is always <laughs> booked and busy. <laughs> <laughs> now I the big the big question I have to ask you, mm -hmm. if you and I know everybody wants to know mm -hmm. if you were ever asked. Mm -hmm. Or ever consider being a full time housewife holding that peach, Monietta? We want to know what I want to know. Would okay. you ever consider being a full time housewife on the Real Housewives of Atlanta? That is funny because it's um, yeah, the opportunity has presented itself in the past. Um, mm -hmm. it was with the kid's father, uh, the children's mm -hmm. father. Um, but we, I chose family, let's just say that. Mm -hmm. It was an issue. And, mm -hmm. you know, the opportunity came back around. I have this amazing husband. We have this amazing blended family. Of course, I would want to show that to the world. You know, and yeah. as a supporting cast, you don't get mm -hmm. to really, you know, mm -hmm. go into the day and day mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. my life. That could be another mm -hmm. reason I stay bored because they're like, what is she doing? But no, child, never that. But anyway, uh, <laughs> so yeah, I would, yeah, I would definitely um go ahead and snatch that peach up if the opportunity um presented itself because i i feel like i have so much to contribute um mm -hmm. to, to you know the brand the network yes. the, everything you know a real housewife doing real housewife mm -hmm. things and doing real boss things and you oh, know yes life, i love it real me. housewife things doing real housewife things real boss things doing real boss things okay that part. so yes mm. of course Let's join the race, honey. And you know, uh -oh. think you can see it inside. You know, I want to see you holding that peach next season. <laughs> Andy Bravo, if y'all listening, please, we need Magneta. And <laughs> but like know, I always say, if it's meant, it's meant. You know, God knows if it's meant for me, it's it'll mm -hmm. be, and that's that's all that matters. Yes, but sure. I, I just want to say I think all the fans want you on there. I've seen oh. people on Twitter talk about it. Like, <laughs> give Monietta that peach. Like, we want to see you bring the regalness, the elegance, the eleganza, oh, the eleganza, and you bring now. the face. But just you know, your spirit. You you're just so very kind, classy, and we just need more of that. We still can get. Hey, if you want to get bad about it with it, you know what's yeah, up. But we we want to see the classiness of you know atlanta and i think that you really exhibit all of those attributes thank you i appreciate you so much and i appreciate everyone that's been showing me major love like it doesn't go unnoticed and yes. i i appreciate the love i really do yes and manetta before we wrap things up i know um you are such a spiritual woman what is mm -hmm. one quote or one um one of your favorite scriptures that you constantly um talk about each and every day as you go on about your day what is one quote that you live by oh wow i can do all things through christ mm. me Honestly, amen that has helped me so much because when you get in those moments where you think you can't go on when you mm -hmm. face the diff difficulties in life when you face mm -hmm. loss in life mm -hmm. um yeah, you think that you can't but you have to just get to you know the root of it and get mm -hmm. through you know Mm -hmm. where your power comes from and you can do all things through Christ. Yes. And it's the goal that you have that you think you can't, you know, just keep going at it. You can do it. You mm -hmm. know, um, God's paid the price and you, you can, you can do it. But that, that right there is one of my mm. goals. One of my, like it, uh, yeah. Yes. Yes. And you know, I, Oh, you know, I, I wasn't trying to get all deep and spiritual, but that <laughs> was kind of, you know, gave me a word and I can okay. do all things through Christ mm -hmm. that strengthens me. And I know that God has a, his hand on you to mm -hmm. uh, prosper you and lead you um, to your bigger blessings and to your blessings. And um, thank you for just, you know, coming on this podcast. And it has been such a wonderful and inspiring um, interview. I'm so inspired by you, Magneta. You keep doing what God has called you to do, being the classy woman that you are, a great wife and a great mother, and a great businesswoman that all of us as 
black women can look up to. So uh, again, thank you so much. And before we end, please drop your website so we can go and support you and buy your books and co-parenting books, anything that you have going on. Please drop all of your social media handles as well as your website. Yes. So on social media, I'm Monetta Shaw, um, M-O-N-Y-E-T-T-A-S-H-A-W. Um, and I think that's, yeah, that's on Instagram, um, Twitter, Facebook, and my Mangata Eshaw. I'm just getting back on that. And I have a group, <laughs> a co-parenting group. Uh, all co-parenters, please sign up, join. We're going to have some great conversations. Um, a great little village is, is going to be good. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, I have, I'm new to TikTok. Child, so I gotta get my kids or somebody to help me with that. Uh oh. But I love to dance, so that's a place oh, yeah. I to live on, girl. Yes. So, um, yeah, it's my <laughs> website. I, it's Monetashaw.com. You can get mm-hmm. all my books. I have t-shirt, merch, um, and um the co-parenting planner. It's coparentingplanner.com. So okay. yes. 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 Make sure you go support her and tune in every Sunday on Bravo for the Real Housewives of Atlanta. And I will see you in the next video again. Thank you so much, Magneta. You are family now, so you got to come back. You yes, know, when the, new, when the new planner drops, the new books, anything, yes. you are always welcome on this platform. Uh, I appreciate you. Thanks so much for having me. This is so much fun. All right, everybody. Until next time. Peace.